Hi, today we're going to look at a quick video on how to use CLR assemblies in functions inside SQL Server. Now this is a feature that has been around in SQL Server for a very long time but one of the more less used features among what uh, you have within SQL Server. Uh, one of the reasons for this is because DBAs are not really comfortable reviewing and working with .NET code and again depending on how the .NET developer has coded the uh, the application or the assembly uh, you are prone to things like memory leak and uh, unclosed connections things like that so you want to be careful when you're using this particular feature but the advantages of the feature are extremely useful for certain high performance scenarios that certain companies look for in fact uh, recently a client of mine actually needed a similar functionality not really from a perspective of uh, being uh, able to go ahead and uh, improve performance but mainly to implement a very specific kind of scenario that they needed. In this particular case what happens is that the client actually needs to go ahead and do a calculation of sorts and they want to hide the calculations behavior so that others cannot duplicate the uh, exact same uh, scenario. Now this would normally be done using a store procedure or a function with uh, uh, some kind of encryption the function of the store procedures body. However, uh, that also brings along with it the challenge of deployment scripts and how to uh, handle the security of the deployment scripts itself. Now, a typical scenario would be to use a setup file and add it as a prerequisite or as part of the deployment manifest for the, uh, the setup file. However, if you're looking at deploying the database on its own, then this becomes slightly difficult to work with because you'd be implementing a solution that you don't really need uh, just to implement the encryption part of it. So, as you can see here, at the moment I have Visual Studio open in front of me and I'm going to go ahead and use a very simple assembly that I've created. So, uh, if I just click File and go to New and then if I click Project, uh, to create the assembly or the DLL, what you need to do is you need to choose Class Library and give it a name. Yeah. Now, once I've taken the class assembly and given it a name, basically what happens is that you'll see that I've got a .cs class here. Yeah. And again, I'm just using this as an example, so I've not really given it any... Uh, a uh, decent name at this point. Uh, you'll see that I've got the typical namespaces here and uh, then you'll also see that uh, in this particular case what this assembly is going to do for me is that it's going to go ahead and take the current time yeah whichever it is in uh, UTC uh, universal time coordinate so Greenwich Mean Time and then it's going to convert that time into the destination time zone which could be India Standard Time, Pacific Standard Time uh, any other uh, standard time that I'm looking to uh, implement. The idea here being that I can convert GMT to any other time zone directly within SQL Server without having to use any kind of date add or uh, uh, date diff functions. Right? Uh, usually this is a good thing to implement in uh, multi-tenant globally uh, up systems where you have customers connecting from around the world and to ensure some kind of universal time that everybody can work with almost all time zones are stored in UTC and then added or deducted depending on which location the destination belongs to so again you can see that I've got a daytime coordinate which will accept the uh, UTC as a string and then it will convert it based on the time zone text which it picks up from the registry and then it returns to me the actual time zone uh, the code for this is available I think inside uh, MSDN as well so I've just simply used this uh, directly from MSDN you'll see that I've got uh, the class called date work yeah and uh, this is basically what I'll be using to go ahead and work with uh, this particular um, assembly yeah and then I'm going to use convert date to go ahead and actually call it yeah so once this is done if I click build again before clicking build I want to change it from debug to release and then press debug or just build and when that's done what I will get is basically in a folder called release under the bin you'll see there's a folder called release and under release you'll see that I've got timezones.dll and this path will become important for me later on yeah so that's pretty much what we need to do there so let's go ahead now and uh, implement this in SQL Server. So once the assembly is created I need to go ahead and do a couple of things. So uh, the first thing I need to do is I need to go ahead and enable certain f uh, parts of SQL Server on this uh, certain features inside SQL Server to go ahead and use this assembly and the first one is to go ahead and change the database owner for the database that I'm working with. So in this case what I'll do is I'll create a new database 
I'm going to call it example 2. And in example 2 database, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and add this assembly as a function. So to do that, the first thing I need to do is I need to change the database owner for database example 2. So you'll see that I'm changing, uh, I'm connected to example 2 and I'm saying change DB owner to SA. So let me just go ahead and do that. So now the owner of the database is SA. As you can see here, owner is SA. Yeah. The next thing I need to do is for assemblies to work in SQL Server, you need to go ahead and set the property of trustworthy on. Now this could open up certain potential security loopholes. So before you actually do this, you need to make sure that you got all the other minimum security privileges in place and you're following the principle of least privileges. Yeah. So again, I'm saying alter the database example to set trustworthy on and I'm going to go ahead and press OK. And the next thing I need to do is go ahead and enable CLR as, uh, uh, assemblies to be working on the server. Now it's already enabled, but I'm going to run this script anyway. So I'm going to say SP configure, and uh, you'll see that it says show uh, advanced options one. You can see I've got an error message here about recovery intervals, but uh, you don't need to worry about that. It's not related to what we're doing here. And uh, then I'll go ahead and say uh, enable uh, CLR uh, CLR enabled. Yeah, and uh, I'll just actually go ahead and do this now. Great. So that's done. Great. At this point, I'm ready to go ahead and use assemblies within my SQL Server database. So the next thing I need to do is go ahead and actually create the um, assembly. So the first thing I do is I connect back to... Um, okay, sorry about that. Just give me a second. The first thing I need to do is uh, connect to my SQL2 database. I'm sorry, example2 database. And once there, you can see I'm creating an assembly called time zone and I've pointed it to a path where the uh, timezone.dll file is available. And I've set the permission to unsafe because in this particular case, I'm using some functionality which requires registry access. So uh, as far as permissions go, it is going to be treated as unsafe. Yeah, uh, you could also go ahead and do external access if you are willing to go ahead and implement a little additional security on top of it from a permission standpoint for the SQL Server service account as well. So I'm not doing that at the moment, so I'm just going to use unsafe, which means that the assembly can go ahead and access any resource that it needs without any limitations. So uh, you can see the path over here, and then I'll just go ahead and say create the assembly from this path with set unsafe permissions. You could also go ahead and put the binary value of the assembly, but that's usually not recommended because assemblies can be pretty big. And uh, then at that point, you'll have like a fairly big script here. Yeah. So now that the assembly is created, if you look here, when I go ahead and expand the assemblies and go to programmability, you'll see that I've got the time zone start assembly here. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and say create the function convert dates, which is going to use uh, a string called uh, envircat 200, which is going to use the universal time coordinate and it's going to accept a string for the time zones and it's going to return a date time to me where it's going to use external name and then it's going to call the time zone followed by the fully qualified name again for time zone dot date works which is basically time zone is the assembly's name and then date works is the class so you need to fully qualify it most people make the mistake of just putting it in like this yeah which doesn't work as far as SQL Server is concerned you'll also want to go ahead and put square brackets here to understand that it's fully qualified and then last but not least you go ahead and call convert date itself yeah so if I go ahead select create function and then press execute you can see that it's created the function so now that the function is created you'll see that uh, I've got the way to go ahead and convert dates from one time zone to another and if I select or if I go ahead and execute this over here you'll see that uh, this is the function that I need to call and when I do that you can see here that it actually goes ahead and converts uh, a date from one date time to another so I could probably change this from uh, 2014 so I'll go ahead and make this 2015 11 and I'm gonna convert this is universal time coordinate so US Eastern Standard Time you'll see that it's uh, converted 1113 to 613 in the uh, in the morning so it's uh, it's uh, bright and early in the morning in the US East Coast right and the good thing about this is that it's actually very useful for uh, you to go ahead and work with because it's extremely fast 
so all you need to do at this point is if you go ahead and select this and press execute you can see that it's actually doing 100 iterations and it's pretty quick in two seconds it goes ahead and does this so a lot of the stuff that you want to do inside SQL Server especially complicated stuff like this uh, you could go ahead and do very easily using the CLR assemblies as long as you're careful with your the way that you do the .NET coding as well and uh, that's pretty much it really so uh, I hope you have fun with this video and uh, please feel free to go ahead and comment if you have anything that you want me to cover in addition to this